Hey everybody, this is Neo once again from the Overclock Magazine and today I'm here to talk to you about the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite AX. For under 8 grand, there isn't a better motherboard. I've looked at the competitors from Asus, from MSI, from ASRock and yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing is close to this one because this particular combination of hardware for what this board is capable of doing and at this price, I don't think you can beat it. So when we talk about price, what price are we talking about? Previously, when I first got this board, it was literally retailing for under seven grand, but now it's 7,123 and that's at Progenix computers. So you better check that out. But for 7,100, you're not going to get a better motherboard. The closest board to this one, I think is a prime A, but that one costs more and it's not this. And you get to understand why I say it's not this one. So the first thing you want to know about this motherboard, like let's just get through the basics. So this is a six layer PCB board that uses uh, 2X copper layers or two ounce copper layers. I'm really not sure what gigabyte means by 2X. And the power design is a 16 plus one plus two design, right? So it's 16 phases that go directly to the CPU. One of the phases goes to the IGP and the two other phases go to the memory controller and the memory, I think. However, the 16 phases that go to the CPU, they're actually doubled because it's, it's a real eight phase, but it's doubled. And those use 70 M power stages. And the one phase that goes to the IGP is 60 Ms. Does this matter to you? To most people, it actually doesn't matter, but it is part of the specification and it's well worth being aware of if you are planning on doing some sort of extreme overclocking on this board. But with that said, let me tell you the other things that actually matter about this motherboard. So just in design, just aesthetically, for the price, again, 7,100 or so at Progenix, there isn't a board that actually feels as good as this one. It literally feels like a board that should be about eight or nine grand, but it just feels so heavy. And I think part of that is because of the heatsink, the MOSFET heatsink, which by the way, includes a six millimeter heat pipe, is really, really beefy. And it works so well at keeping the MOSFETs cool that at no point during testing, regardless of how hot it is right now, did I feel any excessive heat or anything like that? It really is a robust system in terms of just dissipating heat and whatnot from the power circuitry. I like that this board, unlike all the other boards it's competing with, this one officially supports DDR5 7600. And it's not just something that they have on the QVL. It actually does do it because I did DDR5 7600 and it wasn't difficult at all. I mean, with the F3G bias, it was just so easy. But now let's get back to the board. So I had mentioned that this motherboard comes with four M.2 sockets. Now, all of them are Gen 4, which is pretty great. Unfortunately, there isn't a Gen 5 one, and I'm pretty sure we're going to start seeing the first Gen 5 um, SSDs or rather M.2 SSDs this year. But what is available to you is, again, like I said, four M.2 sockets, all of them are Gen 4, and I think two of them support SATA mode as well. Not that you actually care about that. The other thing I want to mention about this motherboard is it's got six fan headers, right? So six fan headers is pretty much standard these days. In fact, I think it's actually the minimum. But the important thing about the six fan headers is how they are arranged. I really like the idea that four of them are arranged at the bottom of the motherboard in a row. So it just for cable management, it makes things a little bit easier. So talking further about what's on the motherboard, what you're going to get is three buttons. I know, right? Usually you don't get so many onboard buttons and so forth at this price point. So one of these buttons is dedicated is a clear CMOS button. The other one by default is a reset button. And the other one, I actually forgot what that other button does. But either way, one of them is programmable to either give you direct to BIOS, give you RGB on off or give you a safe mode. The one thing that isn't there is a postcode LED, of course. I've, I've stopped even expect, stopped expecting that on this sort of motherboard. But you do get the four lights and each of them indicating a different part of the post process. So you have the CPU light, you have the DRAM light, you have the VGA light, and you have the, I think, the successful post or HDD light. And if you get there, of course, your system is booting. So that does help you figure out what's happening, particularly if it goes between DRAM and CPU then you know that your DRAM settings are a bit wonky. That's why you're not able to post. But that is just some of the most superficial things that you could probably even read for yourself on the website. So I'm not gonna go further into that. So let's go to the rare IO. So on the rare IO is one of the other reasons why I think this board is actually punching above its price point. Now you're gonna get four USB 2.0 ports at the rare IO. Yeah, I know it's not impressive, so, but just bear with me. 
What else you're going to get there is one 20 gigabits per second type C port, which is pretty awesome. You're going to get two type A 10 gigabits per second ports, and then you're going to get three type A as well, five gigabits per second ports. The one thing that really matters to me here, which is another reason why I think this motherboard is cheaper than what I would have thought it would be, is that you're going to get a uh, Wi-Fi 6E, right? That's AX211. I think that's the controller. And that supports uh, Bluetooth 5.3 as well. But the 2.5G LAN is actually from Realtek. Does it really make a difference to you? I don't know. If professional gamers and so forth may have preferences when it comes to that sort of thing. But for me, it works just fine. So I'm not going to complain about that. Now that I've gotten over the regular stuff that everybody... The more obvious stuff, I want to talk about what actually made me excited about this motherboard. And I have to tell you, the DRAM OC on this motherboard... Now that's what I was looking for. I mean, like no other motherboard at this price point can give you DDR5 7600. And I know this because I tried, I literally tried. At first, when I first got the board, I can't even remember the original BIOS version I was on. I was struggling. But then F3G came around and man, like 7600 all day, every day. No, no issues. You can just load a profile, Bob's your uncle, you're done. So when i had come across a board that can behave like that oh oh and talking about that as well you're still able to do 1t there's a very high-end board that i was trying recently that cannot do 1t regardless of the speed but this one can i'm talking about the command rate now that's one of the things that i was like well, how did gigabyte manage to do this and it seemed as if gigabyte has put a lot of effort into that DRAM overclocking for this uh 700 series chipset and it shows on a motherboard like this one. Once again, remember, this is a 7,100 Rand motherboard with $300 somewhere there. And it's able to do something that more expensive motherboards are not able to do reliably. I can do DDR5 7600 here reliably. And in fact, I was probably going to even try 7800 because I did get it to post, but it wouldn't go anywhere. So I'm thinking that I can tune my settings so that I'm able to get to the desired frequency that I want to. It would be great if I could do 7800, but if I cannot, trust me, 7600 is more than enough, right? It's more than enough, particularly given that you're dealing with a motherboard at this price point. So when it comes to just software, I'll just, just start with the BIOS. The Gigabyte BIOS hasn't changed much. It is way more user-friendly right now than it ever used to be, but it's nothing significant that's changed from the previous Gigabyte board I reviewed. In fact, even the B650E board that I reviewed, it's very similar to that. In terms of software, they have a new software for Windows. It's light years ahead of RGB Fusion, light years. And I mean that it's not perfect, but at least it's a step in the right direction. And why that matters is because if you're going to get such a great experience with the hardware, it needs to be matched with the software as well. So in terms of the entire Gigabyte lineup of Z790 motherboards, this one, the Aorus Elite AX, par none is the best one. There's just nothing close to it in Gigabyte's entire lineup. And I would even say, compared to what everybody else is offering from the other vendors, this one just takes it. It really does. I have no reason to look elsewhere in as much as I might like the software from other vendors. Nothing comes close to this one in terms of DDR5 uh, frequency support features, Wi-Fi 6E, 4M.2 sockets, audio, all of that stuff. What is there to complain about? And in fact, like I did, if you want to play with some sub-zero cooling, the board is more than capable. With that said, remember to leave your comments below, share, like, subscribe, and let me know what you think of this motherboard. Until the next time, take care and peace.